Josh, tell us first your name and how to spell it and your title. Sure. Uh, Joshua Lafazan, J-O-S-H-U-A-L-A-F-A-Z-A-N, Nassau County Legislator, District 18. Excellent. And what do you want to announce today? Sure. Well, Antoinette, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to formally announce that I am launching a campaign to be the next United States Congressman from the 3rd District here in New York. And that was who's a seat uh, now? As Tom Swazi is seeking the governorship, it's an open seat, and I hope to represent this seat in the House of Representatives uh, come 2022. Excellent. And you will be the youngest? Tell us yeah. about that. Sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, serving at a young age, right? At 18, I ran for the School Board of Education as a senior in high school. At 23, I became Nassau County's youngest ever legislator. At 27, I hope to become the youngest Democrat in the House and one of the youngest ever members of Congress elected. Sure. So I've served in public office for 10 years. Again, I served on a school board at the local level. I served in the legislature at the county level. I'm ready to serve at the federal level. I'm ready to deliver for my neighbors and the community that raised me. Um, I love Long Island and I love public service and I'm ready to make a difference in my country. Now, in your district, District 18, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, how many people do you represent? And if you get this uh, Swazi's old seat, mm -hmm. how many people would you represent in that district? Sure, so it's about 52,000 voters in my district. Uh, we don't know what the district lines will be, but could be over 750,000. So it's a big district, but uh, you know, I tell voters that I have more experience in public office than anyone running in this race. Right? Served on a school board and made education policy. Served at the county legislator and passed a record number of bills. Fighting the opioid epidemic, taking care of our veterans, delivering mental health resources. I am ready to be the next congressman from this district. And if elected, is that what you're going to do? What do you want to do? What are the challenges that you see for you? Sure, so I'm not, you know, I'm not running just to run a race. I'm running to make a difference. Washington is broken. That is not new news. And we have to deliver for Long Island. Drive any road on Long Island. Our infrastructure is crumbling. I want to deliver resources just like I got every major county road in my district paved. I want to secure billions of dollars for this district. We have a mental health crisis in this country, and I want to deliver resources just like I did in the legislature uh, to, to help any young person who needs help. Uh, and, and quite frankly, with 100,000 overdoses nationally from opioids, we need more resources to fight the opioid epidemic. There's so much work to do. But first and foremost is affordability. It is too expensive to live on Long Island, and it's cost prohibitive for young families and young people like me to stay here or to come here. And so we need to lower that sky-high property tax burden and lower health care costs to make a difference for everyday Long Islanders. Will you be able to represent everyone in the community of the district? Sure. So I appreciate that question, right? I've been elected three times in a district won by Donald Trump on the Democratic line. I believe electability is the reason why I'm going to win this election. Uh, I'm the guy that can bring everyone together. I'm the person that builds coalitions. I passed more bills than anyone in the legislature. I a member of the minority caucus because I'm able to build bridges. I'm able to build coalitions around issues and I'm able to deliver for my constituents. So I say, I don't just win elections, I win for my constituents. Washington is broken. Republicans and Democrats don't speak to each other. I want to be a bridge builder as a new uh, generation member of Congress. Excellent. And I know that uh, you had proposed that first responder protected class sure. bill. And, uh, you know, how are you going to win the black vote back? Sure, I appreciate that question. And you know, first and foremost, you know, when I'm asked about this bill, I'll never apologize for looking to protect our first responders because uh, if those keeping us safe aren't protected themselves, then we as a community don't have safety. Um, but what I will say is uh, that bill taught me that when I propose a piece of legislation, I have to go out to all corners of my district to speak to those groups who are affected. Uh, I've been having those conversations since August, uh, meeting, meeting with members, uh, you know, members of the African American community, uh, and I look forward to, to working together to deliver their priorities, right? hear their voice, and, and, and be the congressman that represents all people. What are you hoping for uh, come uh, this year, 2022? Sure. So obviously, launching our campaign around the holidays, we have a six-month sprint until the June primary. What I'm hoping to do is uh, do what I've done on, on the five campaigns that we've won mobilize people around an idea that government should be of the people, by the people, and for the people. That government should actually work. It should be energetic and optimistic. You know, I'm running, of course, to make history, uh, to be the youngest Democrat in the House, but I'm running to represent people like my grandmother and grandfather. My grandfather, Boris, was a Holocaust refugee. My grandmother was a Cuban immigrant. Came to this country and built a middle-class life to raise my mom and her sisters in Brooklyn. 
My grandma tells me that I'm her version of the American dream. I want to give every kid the opportunity to aspire to the American dream. This country is the best country on earth, and we can do so much more to make that possible. Anything else that you would like to add that you want to touch base on that I didn't already ask you? Uh, well, you know, so I guess the two things people ask are one about my education uh, and two about uh, my age, right? So I tell people all the time, I started at Nassau Community College. So I know how important community colleges are to be training centers, uh, to help young people who can't afford to go to college. Uh, and it's why I want to continue to invest in community colleges and make them tuition free. Went to Cornell University, uh, where I studied industrial and labor relations. So I uh, studied under some of the brightest minds in terms of how can we bridge the divide between you know, the public sector and the private sector to work for all Americans and to stand up for union rights. And I went to Harvard for graduate school, where I studied education policy. Uh, you know, our public schools here on Long Island are, are, the, are the crown jewel of the nation. How do we work to make sure that all public schools mirror this excellence? How can we make sure that kids are getting the skills they need to compete in the 21st century? And equally as important, not every kid needs to go to college. So are we investing in their vocational training so they can learn a trade and make a living? Uh, the last thing I get asked is my age. And I understand that people say, Josh, you're 27 years old. Are you ready to run for Congress? I've been underestimated my entire life. At 18 years old, I was told, you're a high school senior. You can't run for the school board. And I won. 23 years old, you can't run for the legislature. And I won. At 27 years old, I am running for the United States Congress, and I am running to win. I'm asking for your vote, and I look forward to meeting you on the campaign trail. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Do you want a two-shot? Yeah, please. Okay.